Vaccinations represent a significant advance in modern medicine. By exposing our body to a weakened form of the pathogen, vaccines stimulate our immune system and help us to acquire immunity against that pathogen. These vaccinations are particularly important for children who are at high risk of acquiring various diseases that can cause significant syndromes and even have long-lasting effects. For a variety of reasons, childhood vaccination is not universal. So now let's take some time to review the clinical presentations of children who may have not been completely vaccinated and review the viruses and bacteria that you need to be aware of in this population. The main pathogens that are protected by vaccines and therefore can potentially affect unvaccinated children are rubella, measles, and poliovirus, in addition to several bacteria, including H. influenza type B, Clostridium tetani, Bordetella pertussis, and Carinobacterium diphtheria. So which vaccine protects against rubella? Very good, this is the infamous MMR vaccine. You remember what type of vaccine it is? Remember, this is a live, attenuated vaccine. In addition to rubella, what else does this vaccine protect against? Measles and mumps, very good. So measles, mumps, rubella, it's a live, attenuated vaccine, very good. What type of virus is measles and mumps? They're part of the paramyxovirus family, very good. Now talking about measles for a quick second, do you remember the prodrome or the preceding symptoms that we see in measles infections? Yeah, remember it's those four C's, very good. You see a cough, see coryza, conjunctivitis, and coplic spots, very good. Now, what is the vaccine for the poliovirus? So remember there are two vaccines, remember what they're called? You start with an S, there's Salk, and there's Sabin vaccines, very good. Do you remember the difference between the two? So the Salk vaccine is that killed uh, vaccine, I remember with the K here. It's a killed or inactivated vaccine, while Sabin vaccine is the live and attenuated vaccine. This one provides better immunity, but since it's live and attenuated, it always has the possibility to revert to an active virus and cause polio. So therefore, this is not used in the United States. Here in the U.S., we use the Salk killed virus for vaccination. Sorry, the killed vaccine for vaccination. So now moving back uh, on to talking about the bacteria, do you remember the main symptom that uh, is seen with Carinobacterium diphtheria? Yeah, we see that bad pharyngitis. Do you remember what uh, vaccine protects against this? DTaP vaccine. Do you remember the characteristic finding of a patient with uh, diphtheria? Well, they have that pharyngitis, which you see those pseudomembranes. So you see the pseudomembrane, pseudomembranous pharyngitis in the throat of, of, of a newborn or of a child. Now, what other uh, pathogens are protected by the DTaP vaccine? Well, it covers diphtheria, as we just said. It also covers clostridium and bordetella pertussis. It's very good. So it covers that clostridium tetani as well as bordetella pertussis. So it protects against tetanus and that whooping cough. Very good. What disease can Haemophilus influenza cause in a patient who's unvaccinated? It can cause a life-threatening epiglottitis, as well as meningitis. And do you remember the vaccine that covers against the Haemophilus influenza bacteria? Yeah, it's the Hib vaccine, HIV. It's against the type B uh, Haemophilus influenza strain. Now talking about epiglottitis for a quick second, what are the clinical manifestations of a patient with epiglottitis? What should you be looking for? Well, you're gonna primarily see some dysphagia, drooling, and oftentimes the patients will have a um, very difficult time breathing, and you'll see this tripoding posture, which meaning they're sort of splinting to breathe better. You remember the treatment for epiglottitis? The treatment for epiglottitis requires meticulous monitoring of the airway, so this can be accomplished by endotracheal intubation or a surgical airway if severe enough. Ultimately, the bacteria will be targeted empirically with a third-generation cephalosporin as well as vancomycin. So it's a combination of Securing the airway, uh, whether it's surgical or via endotracheal intubation, and then treating with antibiotics to make sure you get a handle on these uh, dangerous bacteria. All right, well, that ends the uh, video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and let us know if we can improve it for next year. Thanks so much.